Next, I want to show you how to make uh, calculations in your queries. So let's go back to the one that's called uh, first quarter orders. And I'm going to right click on that. And then we can go back to design view again. Good. So this is the one that had the date range in there. And this is the one that said more than $500. So I'd like to, let's see, I'd like to add the freight to the order amount field. So watch how we're going to add a new field. I'm going to click on the next available column, right? We're going to click on the next available column on the field row. Then uh, I'm going to go back into the expression builder. So I'm going to click on the pull down. Well, actually, I'm going to right click on that area, right click, and then pick on the word build. And now we're back in the expression builder. So notice how the field names are in the middle here. So I'm going to double click on the word order amount, double click, and that puts that in the formula. And I'll put the plus sign in and then double click where it says freight. So it's going to say order amount plus the freight. So you could type that in, but you have to use the brackets and type it in the exact way. So I'd rather double click on those fields and then it puts it in the right format for me. Uh, so in Excel, that might say equals B1 plus C1. It would use the cells. Here we're using the field names, otherwise the math is the same. Now this could be a really simple formula or it could be very complicated, but we're just going to use the field names instead of the cells that you might use in Excel. And it's, it'll be better if you double click on the field names. Now we'll see a lot of examples of the expression builder in this course and in the forms course and the reports course that I have for access. So I'm going to click on OK. Uh, let's see what's going to happen there. We're going to run that. So we have the freight and the order amount. And then we have the new column. It's called expression one. So right away, I want to change that field name. But you can see it did the math. Like I have 240 plus 802. So I have 80440. You can see the math is coming out to be correct. I would like to change that field name. So let's uh, see how we're going to do that. We're going to, we'll go back to design view. OK. See, it gave us that field of expression one. So anything that's before that colon is the field name. Anything that's after the colon is the formula. So I could just change it right here. So instead of expression one, I'll type in line total. Good. Let's go ahead and run it this time. See, then I have the colon, and then the formula is after the colon. So let's run it. And now that field is called line total. Let's do another calculation. Now, if I subtract one date from another date, it'll give me the difference in days, similar to Excel. So I want to subtract the ship date from the order date. So I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, design view. I'm going to click on the next available field. See how I'm in the next available field on the field row. And we'll go back into the builder. I can get to the builder here by right clicking on it, or I can pick on the word builder there. Either way is the same thing. So I'll pick on builder up there. Good. So I want to take the ship date. I double clicked on that, type in the plus, uh, the minus sign, and then double click on the order date. So I have shipped date minus the order date. When you subtract one date from another date, it'll give us the difference in days. So I'll click on OK. Now we know we probably want to change that field name. So it says expression one right there. So instead of expression one, I'll type in the word days. And let's see what it looks like. So I'll pick on run. Okay. So let's see. The ship date is 123. The order date is 117. So it says six there. That looks right. 113 and 19. It says four there. So if I subtract one date from another date, then it gives me the difference in days. Uh, uh, so th that's going to be calendar days. I'm going to go ahead and pick on a design view. Good. So, uh, you know, you can start to do your calculations like this. Now let's do a calculation that's going to involve a function. So if I want to see how about if we saw the number of, uh, of months between those two days, so the number of weeks or something like that, Let's see if we have a built-in function that can accommodate that. So I'm going to click on the next available field, and I'll pick on uh, the builder again. And now we'll bring us back to the expression builder. This uh, can be a really complicated formula, or it could be really simple. So I'm going to expand where it says functions. And just like in Excel, we have some built-in functions. 
So we'll pick on built-in functions. If you know the Visual Basic programming language, you can actually make up your own functions here in Access, but we're going to use the built-in ones for now. So we'll pick on built-in functions. Now you can find them by category. So let's see the date and time category. A really good one is date add. Date add is going to add a, a, a period into a date. So I can add a week or a month or a year into a date to get to a different date. And date diff will show uh, how many weeks or months or years are between two different dates. Now, what you might do as you're learning these is if I want to find out more about date diff, I'm going to click on the word date diff and I'll pick on help. And the help screens, uh, it'll, it'll go to the Microsoft uh, help screens. And let's see what it says about this. So it's trying to show me what to use for months or years or any of those others. And then it's going to give you some, uh, there's some constants that are built into access. And then I'm sure it's going to give us some examples as well. All right, so let's try it. I want to see the number of weeks between those two dates. So we'll use WW. That's why I want to see that screen. It could be hours or minutes or any of those others, right? So now we'll close out of the help window. Now, uh, look, I'll, I'll double click where it says date diff. That's what the one I want to use. So the interval is going to be what we just saw on that screen. Now, I know for a fact that the interval has to be in quotes, and I could have discovered that by looking at that example in that help window. So I'll do uh, open quotes and then WW and then close quotes. Now, date one, so date one should be probably the original date. So I'm going to go back to, look, I want to go back to the fields and the query. So I'll pick on the first quarter order, and then I'm on date one, and I'll double click on order date. Good. Now I'm going to click where it says date two, and then I'll double click on shift date. Good. Now uh, it turns out that the rest of those criteria uh, are the rest of the parameters are actually optional. So I'm going to close that parentheses. After a while, you get to know which ones are, are optional. So I just have used this before. I know that those are optional. So I'm going to close that. So the whole thing says date diff open parentheses, open quotes, WW, close quotes, comma, order date. Notice how order date is in the square brackets because it's a field name, comma, ship date, which is also a field name, close parentheses. So notice what I did. I went to my functions and then I went to the built-in functions. And then I used, you know, in that case, I used the date and time and I picked on date diff. There's the help window. Then to go back to the fields of the query, I, I, go, I went back to the query name and then we see the fields there. So I'm just trying to show you how to use the expression builder. We'll see many, many more examples of that during these access courses. So I'll click on OK. Now we know that we wouldn't change that field name. So instead of expression one, I'll change that to the number of, I'll say weeks as the field name. Let's go ahead and run it this time. So uh, zero means it was probably in the same week. Yeah, like 123 to 117 was probably in the same week. This one took it one week to ship. So it looks like it's rounding it down. Uh, so the two, this, was, this one was ordered to one and it was shipped to 216. So there was two weeks between those two dates. Looks like it's rounding it down. Like the zero, obviously, you know, there were some days there, but it wasn't a full week. So just trying to show you how to just showing you how to um, add some calculations into your query let's go back to design view again you go to your next available field and then you can go into the builder now what i recommend is that you actually save the query before you go into the uh, expression builder let me show you why if i click on that next field and pick on the builder Notice how the days field and the weeks field are not there yet. So watch, if I pick on the word cancel, now I'm gonna save the query, just do a normal save. Then the next time I go into the builder, then the extra fields are there. So before I go into the expression builder, I like to save it so that all of the fields will be there. Then I can use those in the expressions. 
All right, so I'm sure we'll see more calculations as we go through uh, this course and the forms course and the reports course that, that I have out there um, for access. I'm going to close that query. Now, we, we, we already saved it. We'll, we'll save it again. And now you have an idea of how to make your calculations in a query.